Unit 10. You will hear a fragment of a radio talk show. So we have in the studio today Alex Brown, who has just written a book on conflict in the family called Conflicting Opinions. Welcome, Alex. Thanks, Ron. It's great to be here. So you seem to be the authority on family dynamics right now. Well, I don't know about that, but I did do a bit of research and basically decided to put it down on paper because it might help others. You talk about sibling rivalry quite a lot. Actually, for me growing up, there were times when I wished I was an only child rather than having three sisters. Consequently, there's a great deal I can relate to in your book. The big surprise was that it's all quite positive. Well, that was what I wanted to achieve. Some people argue that conflict with brothers and sisters is a bad thing. I wanted to really turn this idea on its head. I guess parents always want to try to find some kind of preventative measures. <laughs> It can be quite stressful. Yes, definitely.、Uh, for moms and dads, they are always looking for some kind of resolution so the family can live in harmony. The thing is, sibling rivalry is inevitable. You rely on your parents to help you survive when you are little, and if a little brother or sister comes along, it is a very real threat to the attention they give you. Therefore, if parents try to put a stop to the fighting, at some point, they're going to feel like they failed. On top of this, you are actually depriving your kids of a great opportunity to develop social skills.、Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure our listeners would agree with you. Well, admittedly, if there are raised voices and slamming doors, this means that the rivals are dealing with the situation in an emotional rather than a logical way. So, how do you handle this? I suppose the best approach is to speak in a calm voice and not add to the noise. Ask them to speak to each other rather than shout. But isn't this just theoretical? It's not always easy to put into practice. I see your point, but the problem is parents often get emotionally involved. This is when they actually raise their voices too, rather than leading by example. What if they don't want to talk? Then separate them and let them calm down. This learning comes in after the event. By talking to each other rationally about why they were angry and how the other person might have felt. You are helping them to develop empathy and listening skills. Could be quite handy when negotiating at work. Exactly. I would also ask them to suggest ways that their conflict could have been resolved. Brainstorming, if you like, which is another work skill. The goal is to find an acceptable solution. That's right. It does take time, of course, but if you see conflict as a learning process. You will see the benefits later on in life.